So, last July, a company called Gorillas, the poster child of ultra-fast grocery delivery, announced that it was leaving the Italian market and fired all its over 500 local employees, less than one year from starting operations. This happened roughly seven months after raising a $1 billion round at a over $3 billion valuation. Unfortunately, what happened to gorillas is not an isolated fact. It's part of a strong global trend. All over the world, stock prices and valuations of tech companies are dropping, and people are being fired. Since the beginning of the year, tech companies have laid off over 50,000 people in the Silicon Valley alone. I could go on and on for hours naming all the famous tech companies that laid off a sizable percentage of their workforce in the last few months. But no worries, I don't want to bore you. <laughs> but the question is, why is this happening? Of course, it's first and foremost the consequence of the worsening of global economic conditions and the growing interest rates that are making more difficult for startups to secure new funding. But the point that I want to make today is that this has also a lot to do with the obsession that everybody in the tech industry has for hypergrowth, growing as fast as possible, and that this trend is pushing companies to engage in behaviors that are completely unsustainable and end up damaging themselves, but also the entire ecosystem. So hypergrowth strategies are nothing new in the industry, and particularly the industry's favorite, blitz scaling. So the idea is to raise a lot of capital and to invest it in growing so fast and so big that you will crush all the possible competitors and eventually establish market dominance by sheer force. So what all the hypergrowth strategies have in common is that there is an almost exclusive focus on growth. And every other aspect of the business, including stability and profitability, are left to be figured out on a later stage. So it's a common belief that hypergrowth strategies were behind the success of some of Silicon Valley's most iconic brands, like Google, Apple, Facebook, and Airbnb. And this has created a real cult of speed in the industry, where founders were, want just to build companies that grow extremely fast. This, in recent years, has been fueled by an unprecedented amount of capital available in the market. To understand how much we are talking about, think that in 2021, the VC aggregate investment broke the historic high of $634 billion. I mean, guys, this is uh, bigger than the GDP of 130 countries. 55% of this investment was represented by so-called super gigantic rounds, investment of over $100 million made in very early stage ventures. So what does it mean? There has never been so much capital available in the market, and it has never been so easy for startups to secure very big amount of funding. So just to give you an idea, a few years ago, it was very difficult for a startup to raise big rounds without having you know, a business plan or show some real traction. But last year, it wasn't uncommon for companies to raise hundreds of millions of dollars after months, if not days, from starting operations. This, of course, has led to the creation of a record number of unicorns, over 600. In 2021, we created an average of 10 new unicorn companies a week. So, there is no doubt that bliss scaling, according to this data, is a very effective strategy for breeding new unicorns and securing a quick exit. That's not what I want to question today. What I want to do instead is to shed some light on the negative effects that this is having on society. And I want to do that based on facts and data instead of ethical considerations. So let's start with the most obvious issue. Blitz scaling is creating a very big number of companies with a huge valuation, but that are very vulnerable, because they require continuous injection of capital to stay afloat. So, of course, having encouraged 
since the early days to pursue growth over stability, and having been floated with record amount of, of funding, these new unicorns aren't equipped to survive tough economic conditions. So the winter, the founding winter that is approaching will result in many of these companies going out of business. And in the best case scenario, will force them to dramatically downsize these, their operations. This translates into billions of VC money wasted. And even more important, in thousands of people, mostly young people, losing their job. So let's move now to the second bulky consequence of this cult of growth. Listed tech companies have never been so unprofitable. So these days, it's not uncommon for a unicorn, for a tech unicorn, to reach the IPO day without having figured out a way to make money yet. And this stays true for a very long time after going public. We are talking years. So in last, year, last years, it seems that Wall Street has adapted to you know, the investors' belief that since Amazon managed to grow out of its losses, eventually everybody else will do. But the truth is that, OK, Amazon lose money for more than nine years before being able to turn a profit. And they needed other six years uh, to recover it, their over three billion losses. But the fact that Amazon did it doesn't mean that all the other unprofitable unicorns are going to do the same. So if we look at all the biggest money-losing public companies in the US, and this list includes globally famous brands like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Airbnb, these companies have far bigger cumulative losses than Amazon had. If we think of Uber, for example, we are talking about $23 billion. They have been losing money for longer than Amazon, and they are showing no sign of turnaround. So let me say this in other words. Some of the biggest and mostly celebrated tech companies on Earth that have raised billions, and on the IPO day, they made their founders, their early investors, and also their early employees very rich, aren't actually making any money. I mean, I'm the only one to find this crazy. OK, but there is a third thing that I would like to, to talk about today. It's a less obvious effect, but it's probably the most dear to me. So the cult of blitzscaling and the fact that it has been accepted and celebrated in the industry as you know, a quick path to success and IPOs has led many ambitious founders to choose to focus their time and their energy on ventures with hyper-growth potential instead of working on complex things. This, of course, resulted in a proliferation of companies that are that claim that are building the future of e-commerce by buying Amazon sellers, or they are revolutionizing payments with another payments processing platform. So bliss scaling has been presented as a quick way to success and recognition, and has contributed to you know, spread this standardized idea of successful unicorn founder that you know, wants to crush everyone and everything that stands in his way to global domination. So being a successful entrepreneur used to be all about excellence and shared value creation. When it is that has become just about making an exit as fast as possible. Now, I understand that you know, both VCs and founders have an interest in pushing, you know, toward, towards, you know, pursuing hypergrowth. There is a monetary interest, and of course, you know, everybody wants to make rich, wants to be rich. Who, who doesn't want? It's normal. So here, I'm not suggesting that we should change the whole way the VC system, the venture capitalist system, works. I mean, I like VCs a lot. And uh, I like VC money even more when they represent an opportunity to expand rather than the only thing that keeps you alive. But I'm a very practical person, and I know that this is a very complex problem. So I really don't, I'm not really suggesting that the solution is, you know, 
to change the nature of things. What I am advocating for is changing the culture. What I believe is that we should stop celebrating just, you know, the unpinned ex-rocket internet guy who raised a billion in less, in less than six months to start a, a grocery delivery business. I mean, do we really need another grocery delivery app? I think that we should uh, stop pushing this model and instead promoting an idea of successful entrepreneurship where speed doesn't count more than the product you are building or the problem you are solving, where excellence is measured in terms of value that you are creating and not in terms of how fast you get to give away 80% of your equity. Hypergrowth companies get all the media attention, but the truth is that out there, there are so many other people and so many other ways to make money while building incredible businesses. Can we please all start celebrating a bit more? The thousands of founders of lesser businesses, less sexy, less fast, less well-founded, that are actually building incredible products and are working on the hard things. The people that are trying to advance technology, that are trying to fight climate change to prevent new pandemic, that are trying to make our lives easier and the world a better place. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating for all of us being social entrepreneurs. I'm not one myself. And I'm not suggesting that all our businesses should be bootstrapped. Mine is venture-baked. All I'm saying is that we should all slow down for a second, take a step back and ask ourselves what successful entrepreneurship is really about. So I asked myself, what it was that made me resign from a very good consulting job, take a big risk and move all the way to Southeast Asia to start a business with two guys that I barely knew. No, it wasn't the possibility to make a lot of money that drove me. It was the possibility to work on something I love. So I believe that this is the secret, as simple as that. It's passion. passion is what all the successful entrepreneurs out there have in common, working on something they love. Passion is the model that I am advocating for today, because passion is what defines successful businesses, because it's what allows you to keep trying when you fail. It was allows you to, it was, it, it's what allows you to build a company and plan for the long run, to be re resilient in face of adversity. So, I believe that this is the most precious thing that VCs and the tech revolution brought to us. The possibility to work on things that we are very passionate about. It doesn't matter if it's gardening or sport or recreating complex workflows, the thing that you like to do. There is always the opportunity for you to build an incredible business out of that. There will always be the space. There will always be the ability to disrupt. So, I believe that this is what makes startups magical. Let's protect that. And to all the founders out there, please, guys, work on things that you are passionate about. And to all the investors out there, please invest in passionate founders because it's passion that will save startups. And everybody knows startups will save the world. Thank you.